Thank you very much. Thanks, Sunil. Yeah. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, I'll provide you a different way of creating a Linux machine. I want to just repeat it, but the approach is different. Look at this. In this, when we first in this uh, Linux machine, what we have done first, we have created the Linux machine and I have connected to the Linux machine using putty. And in putty environment, we have executed some commands to install the web package. Go back. So this is the commands which you have executed in the putty environment, isn't it? So we have switched to root user. We have updated the repository. We have installed HTTPD and we have created a file and we have started this. And then that Linux machine is now called as a web server. Now, what I'll do, I provide a different uh, approach. Look at this. Launch instances, as usual, this time also I'm going to go with same operating system, Amazon Linux. T2 micro instances, obviously. In step three, it's all about number of instances. So okay, I go ahead and create one instance, that's fine. But scroll down under advanced details. Can you see user data here? Now here, whatever the commands I have executed on putty, I'll be copy pasting the same commands not in putty and be providing that in the user data. These scripts, these, these scripts are nothing but less set of commands. These set of commands, which I have mentioned under user data are called as bootstrap scripts. These are called as bootstrap scripts. The only extra line what I have included is that hash exclamation slash bin slash bash. That helps you to understand that this is not just normal text. It, it helps you to understand these are the Linux commands which should be running on the terminal that's called as a bash terminal. So these scripts, scripts are nothing but set of commands will execute automatically. You don't need to manually execute as you mentioned the scripts, the scripts gets executed automatically. So whenever you create an EC2 machine, automatically you want some set of commands to get executed that you can mention it in this particular location. These are called as bootstrap scripts. So when you launch an instance, you have an option of passing user data to the instance that is used for performing common automated configuration tasks. Whenever an EC2 machine gets created, you want some set of commands to be executed automatically, mention that in the bootstrap scripts, okay? So that's it. So that's about the different approach. I just want to show you some exposure towards the bootstrap scripts. Next, next, security group. Uh, what port needs to be open? Not only SSH port, you should also open HTTP port, you can mention it as anywhere in the world can connect to the HTTP, anywhere in the world can connect using put if you have the credentials. It's always provided to provide a group name. Last time I have provided a security group as SG21. This time I want to provide a security group as SG22. It's always better to have a unique name and security group is all about dealing with ports. Now we are confident about dealing with security group. Review and launch, click on launch, create a new key pair. This time I write Sunil 22 and I download the key pair. You know the key pair extension is .pem. Let's get it downloaded and click on launch instances. This is one more Linux mission. So I write it as second Linux mission for today's session. So I'm writing it as Linux 2. This mission gets created. This mission will be into running state and the commands which we have mentioned gets executed automatically. You need to give some time. Okay, because it needs to update the package, install the update, the repository, install the package, create that index.html file. Wantedly, I'm writing a content called my Google hyphen two. Last time I have used my Google, just my Google. So wantedly, I'm writing a different content just to experience the difference that I am creating. I'm, we are connecting to second server. So it will be running, but you need to give some more time, couple of minutes for the commands to get executed in the background so that this machine gets automatically converted into a web server. So bootstrap scripts are nothing but set of commands that gets executed automatically whenever a machine gets launched. That's it. So today you have expressed the concept of web server, a very beautiful concept. Next session is all about load balancer, 100% interview question. What is load balancer? How exactly the behavior of load balancer is? That's our next session. Do not miss load balancer class. It's very, very important from the interview point of view. Okay. And uh, before ending, as you know, we will not have sessions on Saturday, Sunday. There is no session on Saturday, Sunday. Next session is on Monday and what's Monday's agenda?
load balancer, which is very, very important in AWS. I think we have given sufficient time. Now, how can I access this particular Linux machine? Take the public IP 13.127.32.48. This is the IP address, isn't it? So this IP address mention it in the browser. Are you getting my Google hyphen two? Are you getting the same content? Yes, you're getting the same content. Did I manually executed these commands? No, those are bootstrap scripts. So I hope you haven't understood the importance of bootstrap scripts. Bootstrap scripts are nothing but set of commands that gets executed automatically whenever a machine is launched. Okay, clear? Yes, or oh, updates about this. Update.